Uh, so welcome to the, our latest and most exciting project for me, certainly very exciting, the KDJ Bukhari EVIE project, which stands for Electric Vehicle in Education. And now we are very excited about the learning opportunities and experience that our students are going to have from this project and the potential it holds uh, to spark interest and passion. We, when I mention we, we in this case is the school leadership team that you see here, Ms. Chasworth, Ms. Timothy, the marketing and registration teams, and the two leaders of this project, that are Mr. Carroll, who's over there, and myself, uh, Suresh. We here also include Dr. Glenn, uh, who initiated the idea of running this project in February this year. <coughs> and in true KTJ's make it happen spirit, here we are, a few months later, making it happen. So to start us off, let's watch the video first. Fast. 
So, you know, Sebastian might stand a chance then. <laughs> um, we, are, we are absolutely delighted that so many of you came to see this. We're obviously looking forward to hearing from Felix um, and from Flory when he comes, who has worked actually really well to convince us to take part in the project because he took Suresh around and Carol around the factory and actually really showed us how they were built so we know they're safe, so we know it's safe for the students to go in. We put a lot of thought into those sorts of things as well. Um, Really, from our perspective, this is not just an academic exercise, it's not just a, oh great, we're going to teach you about uh, you know, engineering. It isn't that at all, okay? It's so much bigger and broader than that, and that's what we want for you students, is to take away from this, being leaders, potentially, of the future, technologies like this yourself. We want you to pave the way to be creators uh, and to take sustainability and all of those endless possibilities that come with it forward with you. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to people who know a lot more about cars than me. Thank you. And I think Pyro, more actually known to some of us as Queen, uh, is a former KPJ student. Uh, he was here for four one from five, and uh, he was in the house of Nakedin, where I was the house teacher. And oh, thanks to Nakedin support here. Yeah. Um, he is the son of Uku Nakidin, who is the founder of the school. And he's also the grandson of our late uh, Tonku Jokpo, who the school is named after. So please welcome to the Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for having me here today at KTJ. It's good to be back after a long time. <laughs> I mean, I, I, as Mr. Suresh said, I was only a student here in Akiden House as well. I really enjoyed my, my time here. And uh, I hope you guys also are enjoying your time here. So today, I'm here to talk about a fantastic project. And this project is making an electric car. So Mr. Suresh called me up to talk about this project at the school. And my immediate thought was, I, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in on this. You know, I, I love that this is so innovative learning. It's, it's a good experience in learning. Uh, it's very educational and, and it'll be a lot of fun as well. So, why did Suresh call me, you may ask? So, uh, having known Suresh since, since I was 12 years old, he was our house tutor in Nakiden House. We had a lot of great times there. Um, I was in the naughty boy. Was... <laughs> and uh, yeah, our connection goes way beyond professional collaboration. Uh, it reflects a shared commitment to education and personal growth. So, the involvement of the Fori motor car, with its reputation for crafting bespoke vehicles, assures us that this project is backed by technological and electrical expertise necessary for success. The collaboration with the Fori motor car not only adds prestige, but it ensures the project is forward-looking and innovative. So, learning isn't just about books. It's about doing exciting stuff. So just imagine building a car at 12 years old. Uh, that would be amazing for me. I'd be like, if, if I had this chance to build a car at 12 years old, I would say I'd be over the moon. <laughs> so this project isn't just about nuts and bolts, but it's about using tools to build something real. And guess what? Students are going to learn about how the cars work, like why the grip matters, the, the grip of the tires and everything, how the batteries last, and how the aerodynamics of the car work. So, and a wide range of mechanical and electrical understanding as well. These are not just abstract concepts, but a tangible real world applications of knowledge that will shape the understanding of technology and innovation. I can't help but imagine the impact such an opportunity would have had on me uh, during my educational journey. Picture my 12-year-old self, picture my 12-year-old self actually driving a car after building it. That, 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 that's something I uh, I would have loved so much. So, um, in conclusion to all this, I express my wholehearted support for this project and extend my best wishes to the students who are uh, who will embark on this exciting journey. So let's cheer on the students taking on this adventure, have fun building and racing. Thank you, everyone. So uh, next, I'm delighted to introduce Mr. Felix Holler, who is the general manager of marketing and international business department of Bufori. Uh, thank you so much for 
Suresh. Um, as Suresh said, I'm Felix, I'm the GM of Euphoria. And uh, first of all, sorry for being late. A little bit of traffic coming out of KL. Um, and uh, yeah, let me just introduce Euphoria first, because I'm sure there's uh, a lot of you that have never heard of the brand or the, the manufacturer. Um, so Bufuri is essentially a manufacturer of handcrafted um, luxury cars which are customized um, to the requirements of each uh, customer and uh, we've been around for more than 35 years. Uh, so the journey started in 1986 in Sydney back then when my boss Jerry uh, started the company and we moved to Malaysia, uh, lock, stock and barrel in the mid-1990s. So um, there's a bit of history involving Negri Sembilan also. Um, so we have been in Malaysia since the mid-1990s and in the factory we are currently operating since 1997. So what we do is basically cars uh, with a contemporary classic styling and soon we also have a bit more modern looking cars which are in the works now. And we uh, build those cars to a very high standard, um, to international type of rule, uh, regulations, um, European standard basically. And we export them to so far more than 40, 45 countries in the world. Um, we are considered a boutique manufacturer, so um, it's a small operation, we make 15, 20 cars a year, it's a very uh, niche uh, operation if you want. And uh, we also do other activities, we do car restoration work, we do aircraft interiors, we do engineering services, interior design, lots of little things um, that people come to us for because we have this, um, all these skills under one roof. So, how did EV come about? Um, so, that's a bit of an interesting story. Actually, two years or one and a half years ago, um, a teacher from an international school, it was a garden school, approached us and he was working on a similar project from, uh, from Europe, um, a kit car to build, and he thought, why, why not get a Malaysian company to build one of these? And he heard about Bufori and uh, approached us. So. Um, First, we were a bit intrigued, you know. Um, we're building cars, and we, you know, we don't have much time to do this really. Uh, but then we thought about it, and we um, we thought, okay, actually, this project could be very interesting for us because, um, and, and not only for us, but all the parties involved. But from our angle, it was addressing a very specific um, problem. Yeah? So in the past years, we uh, were facing that issue that we get a lot of applicants for engineering positions. Uh, fresh graduates and they come to us and a lot of them they're um, not really passionate you know, they're, they come to an interview and they and then you realize very quickly actually they they don't have that fire in them that um, they want to solve engineering problems so um, that's very uh, sad actually to say and a, a lot of them um, choose to study engineering because their parents told them so or because uh, someone told them to do it or because they think they can earn money or something so um, passion was a secondary reason for them to choose that path. And um, when uh, this teacher approached us, Ian is his name, um, and, and then we realized there's actually another problem that is very um, real right now at this, uh, this time and age. Uh, the young generation um, is actually very, very good at TikTok, at IT, at smartphones. Uh, but when it comes to manual labor, when it comes to using a tool, to I don't know, replacing a light bulb, or all these little things that are um, important in, in your daily life, in your future life, um, they, they actually never get to experience that or learn that. Yeah? And now, we, in, for the next couple of years, these parents, these, these people will become parents who are supposed to teach their kids how to do this. So, um, we felt there was a big void in this um, uh, area and uh, so we thought this is actually something uh, where everybody can benefit. Yeah. Um, so the, the big objective of this um, EV project is actually to uh, trigger passionate engineers uh, to um, reach out to those kids uh, at, a, at an age where they haven't really decided where they want to go in the future, which path they want to choose, and see, um, actually, maybe engineering is something for me because that project um, uh, was exciting and I loved solving that problem, I loved assembling the car, I loved um, working with those fasteners and tools and, uh, and the materials. So, um, 
there might be some people and they say, oh, actually, I hate it. Yeah. So the idea is to separate those that really are passionate about it and, and encourage them to go this path and show the other ones that, oh, maybe I'm better at marketing, maybe I'm better at project management or um, whichever subject. You know? So that was the, the big idea. Um, and of course, we will be before it. We didn't want to make a car that's um, not up to before standard. Yeah? So it had to be of top-notch quality. It had to include all the um, high-end materials that we also use in our full-scale cars. It had to be um, something that we are proud of yeah? and something that was worth of putting before it anymore. So, um, and we were, especially my boss, he's a perfectionist, so he doesn't like to do to take shortcuts and so on. So, um, we uh, started drawing up this car, and we decided on a. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any slides. We decided on a, a stainless steel frame, which is a split frame. That means it can be split in two, yeah, which is easy for transport. So you can put it in an elevator and transport it up. Um, we decided that there have to be uh, as many different types of fasteners as possible, so that the kids learn. Um, the difference between um, a screw or bolt or nut and so on. Um, there had to be um, components that are um, similar to that of a full scale car. So you have a steering column, a steering wheel, of course, you have a steering rack, a proper double wishbone suspension, you have uh, wheels, of course, a braking system, a pedal box, that means you have a brake and accelerator pedal, which is adjustable in some more. You have um, a motor, of course, you have an electric motor, a small one, of it. Um, you have batteries, uh, and you have a proper suspension. So everything to um, build the car, really. Um, and the body, of course. Yeah? So the frame is nothing without the body, and we decided to keep it fun, um, to uh, draw inspiration from the 1950s, 1960s race cars. And when some of you might recognize uh, Le Mans inspired style. So that was the idea of our um, industrial designer. And uh, it's actually a fiberglass body, uh, which can be um, attached to the frame. Uh, um, and of course, um, because uh, young kids will be driving this car, it's all about safety. Uh, so we made this car as safe as possible. So the frame is, of course, very sturdy. Uh, we have a crash box in the front, which is basically a big styrofoam block. We have a safety harness, which is the seat belts. Yeah. Uh, we have a rollover bar, um, and the body is also like a like a buffer zone. Yeah. Um, of course, these cars they're not going to drive uh, like an F1 car. So you're going to make uh, a maximum speed probably of 28, 29 kilometers per hour. So this is what we measure. Um, of course, if you want to replace the uh, motor, which um, you know, you're not supposed to. You replace the motor, uh, you can achieve much, uh, much different dynamics. But for this program, we decided on a, um, a motor which suits the um, the program. Yeah. So um, it's really a teaching, a learning platform uh, because there's so many different subjects united into one um, product, one one tool, really. Um, so you have engineering, you have marketing, you have uh, project management, you have graphic design, you have uh, well, um, plenty of things. You can, you can include a charity also. Yeah. So there's a lot of these little um, elements that uh, are value of different team members. Yeah. So those that are more attracted by the engineering side will work on the car. Those that are more attracted by the uh, marketing side or sponsorship side will work on that uh, part of the car. So, um, and it's also a learning curve, I think, for the teachers, you know, because they are confronted with a new um, learning instrument. Uh, so it's also a learning curve for them and for us as well, because it's uh, the first time we do that. So, um, needless to say, we are all super excited. Uh, this is something special, and uh, so far the reaction we had from the schools involved is that the kids are very, very uh, excited about the project, um, the teachers as well, and uh, well, we are all happy about how it started, and we're now trying to um, build your car uh, as fast as possible, uh, so that you can start the program here too. Alright, so thank you very much. So, of course, the basics, essentially, is 
was learning about the nuts, the screws, the different fasteners, the bolts, what's the difference between them, and then, then moving on to learning about tools. Learning about tools. So spanner, wrench, and all the other tools that we'll be using for this project. Now that's the basic level. Secondly, then we move on, once we've got to know that, now that skill that Felix talked about, light bulb, is about, you know, sometimes we struggle to fix um, an IKEA cabinet. We need somebody else to come to it. So putting that uh, ability to move on to the second part, which is about assembling, making something work, bringing something together and to see it work and how to do it. And learning from that, learning from that failure, learning from why is it not working, why is it wonky, why is it not, why is it falling down, where does this one extra bolt go? Uh, why do I always have extra bolt when I take something off and Jay will understand <laughs> yes, about that. Then, moving on to the second level, which is the basics again, but now learning about different parts of the car. Now, just now, Felix mentioned a few things already. So, moving on first, the first thing we touch in a car, and everybody wants to pull that thing, is the steering wheel. Learning about how it works. How does it move the wheels? How does it move direction? How it works with that? What's the, uh, what's the knowledge behind that that we need to understand? How does that connect it this way and that way? Why is it connected in that way? How is it connected? Today is and learning and putting it all together, hands-on experience. Then we have, uh, then we need to learn about the wheels, about the tires, about tire pressure, about how the wheel bearings work, how does it work, how do we make it smooth, what kind of tire pressure do we need to use to make sure that we get the maximum use of the battery power that we have. Learning about that. Felix then mentioned also about the um, about the brake pedal, which is in a box, which is movable, and with two pedals there, the brake and the accelerator. How does a brake system work? How does it function? How does it stop a car? How does it slow down the car? An accelerator, how to use that to drive safely? How does it transmit power to the, to the, um, uh, to the wheels? And then we move on to the safety item, looking at the seat belt there. What's the importance of seat belt, importance of safety, helmet, gloves, and building, green building, what do we need to wear? So we're very uh, focusing on health and safety all the time, making sure that our students learn the importance of making sure they think ahead and prepare for the next thing they're gonna do. And of course, uh, Phil already mentioned about the roll cage and the seat. What's the right seat? Level and how do we move that about with the brake pedal to make sure that driving, driving safely, driving comfortably, and that's just part of that. But then we go on to the more advanced part, which is to do with what's behind here. What's behind that is the motor, the power. So, if you have a power, how does that work? The battery range. How does that transfer power to the motor? How do we then the motor drives the wheels? What do you need to do to make sure that it lasts the distance? So, um, so that's assembly and testing. Um, now, on top of that, we have to teach our students how to drive. But they have to drive the car. They have to sit in the car. They have to drive safely. And 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 uh, Sarah mentioned just now about safe, uh, safety being a very important factor. That is absolutely important. And also Felix mentioned about how the whole thing is constructed with the idea of safety behind it. Make sure that we, first of all, are undertaking a safe project. Secondly, that our students, when they're in the car, are driving safely. And to do that, we need to limit the speed in the beginning, perhaps even lesser than that, to get them to understand how to maneuver and how to brake, how to steer, and how to come to a stop. So the driving that we need to teach uh, about safely. Now, um, then moving on to uh, the most important, exciting part for most people who are in cars is the race. When is it? Why is it happening? How do we race? What, what do we take? What does it take to win? <laughs> <laughs> but 
first, we need to drive safety. So the race is in May 2024. And we are, we are one of nine schools that taking part. So we are competition with other nine schools. Uh, and it's not just based on speed, who finishes fast, it's also uh, most importantly distance. How fast can our car can our car last? How many, you know, what's the distance that we need to cover? Uh, and all that comes with that learning on speed, means the battery is going to be used up very quickly, but then if you are slow, you may not. <laughs> so the learning about strategy, learning about what is best for that particular team, and then at the same time, during the race, watching the other team, see what they're doing, and thinking on the feet to say, we need to change strategy now, we need to do this now, or we need to do that, or when something doesn't work, at that time, something doesn't work with that car, the team, they're all figuring out how to solve that at that moment and making sure they finish uh, the task. And learning, thinking on their feet, and that's uh, So then, uh, so that's the race. Um, so there's teamwork that, that Felix mentioned just now. Thinking on their feet, uh, working out strategies ahead of time, going there, implementing it, doing the testing time as well, uh, trying different strategies to come up with what is best for that particular team. And then, uh, and then on top of that, so that is the race part. And then, uh, Philip also mentioned about other learning opportunities. Now, the other learning opportunities is, comes, for me, comes under holistic education that KTJ always emphasizes about holistic education. Now, what, what about holistic education here? What can we, what, how more than, what, what else is involved in this learning? First of all, Sarah um, just, just now mentioned about sustainability. And as all of you know, sustainability has been a core function of KTJ. We are strong on sustainability, and that's uh, something that we have always supported and want to continue to support at points. So the first thing is that all this learning about EV, learning about electric vehicles, and making sure that we can sustain, uh, that it's done in a sustainable way, is the first aspect of it. The, uh, sustainability learning about sustainability. So that's the first aspect. Okay, number two, learning about design. Um, learning about why the car is designed in that way. What makes it aerodynamic? What doesn't make it aerodynamic? And learning about those basic designs first of all. Learning to design their own uh, logo. Team logo. These are learning to come up with your own team name that is working, that's workable, and learning all uh, about that. Thirdly, it's also uh, that there is an element of charity that Felix mentioned just now. That every team will have to work, will have, will need to work with a charitable organisation in in supporting their cause. Now, this is not necessarily when we think about charity. Often, it's about oh, raising money for them. Not necessarily. It's also about raising awareness for these charities. It could be from the presentations that our students do. It could be from the t-shirts that they wear and, and having the logos of the uh, charity they support. Also about uh, putting the logos on their cars. And then designing which part they should put the logos on as well, part of the design, and learning through all that. And then also there is a fourth component. It's where they have to come up with a portfolio. Portfolio documenting their journey from where they started to where they have, what learning they have done. That includes all the successes and all the failures. As you know, we learn best from failure, from testing, and making things work from what doesn't work. And that's the journey that they have to document as well, making sure that, uh, that they, not only in written form, but also in video, as well as in audio uh, and recording, making sure that social media, in Historia, working in Historia, making sure that their projects are all uh, uploaded and publicized. On top of that, uh, they will be learning about presentation, presentation skills. Now, this includes pres presenting to the group initially, learning to present what works, what doesn't. As I said, I'm trying something new here, learning. Present in a different way. And uh, learning from there, from presenting to the group, presenting to the year group, form two, form three, moving on to presenting at school assembly, and then, or during the race day, 
they have to present their portfolio and do a verbal presentation to the judges. So the race is not just who's fastest, who goes furthest, but also a combination of that. Okay, so that's what I meant by holistic. So this too makes it a competition. So just because you're the fastest, the car is the best level, doesn't mean that it has to be good everything else as well. Which is why it's very much part of what the AG offers in this holistic education. So the next question is uh, comes to where and when. So as you saw from the first video, it's starting in January. Uh, as soon as well, we we are starting the theory lessons in January, and as soon as the car comes in, the cars come in, we will then uh, start the practical sessions uh, doing that. So the timeline that we're working towards is May 2024. That is the race sometime in May. That's when it happens, the competition happens. So working backwards from that, so we need, we only have two terms to complete the work. From starting January to May, we only have about five months. Right? So, so the first term, the first term we are proposing at the moment, we are looking at four hours per week on two days, two hours per day. So after school, four to six, four to six and two separate days to make sure to make sure that you have enough time to build the cars and make it work, including testing, testing and uh, and, and uh, other things that's related to that. Uh, in second term, which is term three, or the second term of operation, which is term three, this is the first term. So sorry, let me correct that. Term two. And in term three, we are looking at up to, up to six hours per week as we get closer to the race uh, competition day. We get six hours to, to get everything ready. Now, it may not be six hours, maybe we need only four hours. As uh, Craig said, we are all testing at the moment. We are not sure how much time is needed and how, what is actually needed. So we will be learning through the process and feel the four hours needed and maybe four hours, maybe six, maybe it's in between that. Um, and then, of course, we're working to the competition in May 2024. So maybe the where, so that's the when, and talk about where is we are at the moment setting up a workshop for this purpose. A workshop that is for building the three cars in a safe environment making sure that we've got enough space, making sure we've got the helmets, we've got all the tools that we need, making sure we've got the PPE uh, equipment that we need in order to build this within, within the school. And also a, a testing ground so that the students can drive around safely. So I'm coming towards the end and then we talk about cost. We're looking at, uh, I'm still uh, working with the uh, finance director at the moment. We are looking at around 950 per term. To, to, to 950 per term. That's the figure we're looking around. So it will not be more than 1,000. It will not be less than uh, 900. Because we need to factor in miscellaneous costs that we are not at the moment sure of. So the more we work on it, the more we know. But we are targeting at 950. But no more than a thousand. So that is the, the figure that we're looking at. So that's per term. So that is uh, times two. So we're looking at between RM18 to RM2000 for the whole program, which includes the transportation, the going to the venue testing, uh, going to go kart tracks, and testing it there, everything that's involved, all in. So, so that brings me to the conclusion that we, this is very much, oops, sorry. <laughs> I'll finish it off with make it happen at KTJ. <laughs> 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 <laughs>